if there's one movie that probably is the one that um, uh, is most similar in its own way, uh, I guess via the mise en scene and the um, the tone of the film, it would probably be the thing. But, uh, but you know, but that's interesting because um, you know there's a there's a Reservoir Dogs quality to this film. But Reservoir Dogs, uh, the thing was a big influence on Reservoir Dogs, and I mean there's obviously aspects about it that uh, 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 that are similar. Kurt Russell is one of the stars. Ina Morricone does the soundtrack, and you know the, the, there's the snow. Those are big elements. But those are what they are. The real elements that I think what what the thing has the carpenters of the thing has to do with my film is the fact that they're both studies of paranoia. None of the characters can trust the other characters, but yet they're trapped together because they can't leave because of the harsh elements. And it's basically what happens as they try to deal with each other. And not only that though, there is another aspect. I defined it when I saw The Thing and I tried it in, in Reservoir Dogs and I tried it in this movie, where to me, the paranoia in The Thing was so thick and it was so bottled up in that shelter that the paranoia bounced across, uh, bounced on the walls throughout mm. the movie until it had nowhere else to go but through the fourth wall and into the audience. Mm. That's what I hope that I uh, uh, that I share with the thing more than anything else. What was the dog doing in the rec room? I don't know. It's just wandering around camp all day. Are you saying to me the dog wasn't put in the kennel until last night? Right. How long were you alone with that dog? I don't know, an hour, hour and a half, maybe. What the hell are you looking at me like that for? Not sure if my movie's as good as The Wild Bunch. Uh, that's up to other people to figure out. I don't know if there's a similarity between me and Peckinpah, but there is a, um, I don't know if there's a similarity. I think we're kind of doing different things, but, he is such a very specific director, and I'm a specific director, so there, so there could be a lot to be gained, all right, by uh, uh, exposing yourself to his vision and then exposing yourself to mine. I don't know how good I, I work in uh, my films my uh, fair in the comparison, but nevertheless. Well, there definitely is a uh, um, an Agatha Christie mystery aspect to this uh, to this film, and I've always really liked mysteries, and I've never really wondered why they kind of uh, gone away. Now, oddly enough, I hadn't seen uh, <clears throat> Sidney Lumet's Murder on the Orient Express until <coughs> uh, very recently. I only saw it about a few months ago. We actually, oh, a month ago, we showed it at my my cinema. Mm -hmm. in uh, Los Angeles, the New Beverly. And so I watched, I had heard about it forever, uh, but I'd never seen it before, so I watched it uh, the other day. But that and uh, uh, Ten Little Indians, mm -hmm. and then there were none, the Rene Claire version in particular, uh, 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 they were definitely big uh, influences in, in doing this movie. And I, I only hope I, I, I pull out the mystery part uh, uh, half as good as Ag Agatha Christie does. Pierre, le colonel, s'excuse de son geste. Merci, monsieur. Et Seigneur Foscarelli. You are a naturalized American subject. You bet. For how long? Seven years. Ah, mais les cordes de John of the Cheese. Ben, Encore de... Pas de de respondre à la demande. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. But there is, uh, yeah, there is definitely an aspect. You know, any of the claustrophobic westerns mm. where characters are uh, 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 trapped inside of a shelter and they can't leave, but they, and they have to hash out their problems, whether it be uh, ombre or outcast of poker flats, mm -hmm. or a lot of, there's a really terrific spaghetti western called uh, Kill the Living and Pray for the Dead, mm -hmm. with Klaus Kinski, that's a very good one too, and it's the same scenario. Uh, but ombre is really good, and also it's written by uh, Elmer Leonard, one of my favorite uh, uh, writers, and so in that, and our dialogues are very similar, so they both share those similar type of dialogues.
what it has to do, well, uh, what this movie has to do with Khartoum is uh, the format in which we shot the film in was uh, Ultra Panavision uh, 70, which is uh, um, special lenses that Panavision created to give um, uh, you know, the widest possible frame from uh, one lens uh, achievable. It's a 276 frame as opposed to a 235 frame, mm -hmm. like most uh, scope films. And, and actually, the, to be projected properly, um, normally the, um, uh, the projector needs an adapter on the lens of the projector to blow it out, to mm -hmm. give it that, that special look. But the thing is, that was a format that was used in the, uh, in the 50s and the 60s. Ben Hur was shot in it. Uh, it's a mad, 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 mad world, Battle of the Bulge, um, the Marlon Brando Mutiny on the Bounty, a few other movies, too. But the last movie shot uh, on this format was Khartoum in 1966, the last movie until our movie mm -hmm. in 2016. Who will be remembered from Khartoum? Your God or mine? But Rodun Pasha, why should you be remembered? You are forgotten already. <laughs>